Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we're going to talk about familial syndromes that increases your risk for breast cancers and other cancers uh, as shown in Kurt's notes. If you haven't been to Kurt's notes, the website, I'd highly recommend it. It's got great resources. So let's begin. Let's talk about BRCA1 and 2. BRCA genes just in itself without the mutations, their normal function is tumor suppressors involved in the homologous recombination repair pathway, meaning it repairs DNA breaks using sister chromatids as a template. And so if you, you might imagine if you get mutations in BRCA, it's gonna lead to genomic instability because you can't repair any damages and that's gonna increase your risk for ca developing cancers, particularly breast and ovarian cancer. 3.5% uh, approximately uh, account of all breast cancers are accounted for BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. And more common in certain ethnic populations like Ashkenazi Jews, treatments are can be prophylactic. For instance, if your relatives have it and you know you have it and you're relatively young, you can do a prophylactic bilateral mastectomy and salpingo oophorectomy uh, before 40 years. And you want to submit the entire fallopian tube and ovary because uh, you want to look for STIC, which is serous tubal intraepithelial carcinoma, which is seen in the fallopian tubes and the fibrillae more specifically. And it's a precursor to high-grade serous carcinoma of tubo ovarian origin. Um, if you do have carcinoma that arise from your BRCA a germline mutation, you can treat with PARP inhibitors. It helps with single-strand DNA breaks. So when combined with BRCA mutations where you can't repair already, cancer cells have difficulty repairing and leads to synthetic lethality. Uh, in terms of comparing BRCA1 and BRCA2, the incidence of breast cancer is approximately the same for both. Um, there's a higher risk for ovarian and fallopian tube high-grade serous carcinoma for BRCA1. Um, there's a higher risk for male breast cancer and prostate cancer for BRCA2. Uh, both have a possibly increased chance of pancreatic cancer and BRCA1 also has increased risk of colon cancer. Um, BRCA1, the morphology, it kind of reminds me of the medullary pattern that you see in invasive breast carcinoma, where you see a circumscribed growth pattern with pushing borders, dense lymphocytic infiltrate, and high grade, whereas BRCA2 will be variable morphology and grade. Uh, the molecular profile will be luminal A. Uh, for BRCA2, it will be ERPR positive, HER2 negative, and BRCA1 will be basal-like, meaning it's triple negative, ERPR, HER2 negative. Okay, now that we talked about the big BRCA1-2, let's talk about other syndromes. Lee Fraumini syndrome, TP53 mutations. It's an autosomal dominant mutation. And I, I remember there's a story of one family that had Lee Fraumini, and besides the wife, the husband and the three children all uh, passed away from cancer and tragic um, syndrome. Um, and TP, this is the reason why you develop cancers so frequently is TP53 is like the gateway to, for, this, uh, for protection. Um, and if that gateway gene is mutated, then it'll lead to lots of cancers. So the most common is breast, greater than 90% lifetime risk, but also soft tissue, brain, adrenal cortical, and bone. There's also CHECK2 associated. This is a germline mutation in CHECK2, and it's a tumor suppressor activated by double-strand DNA breaks, and it's upstream of TP53 and BRCA1. And mutations leads to disruption in the DNA repair, uh, and more errors, and leading to carcinogenesis. And there's a 30% increased uh, risk of breast cancer. Let's talk about pooch jaeger syndrome. When I think of this, uh, I think of polyps and mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, especially of the lips. So it's an autosomal dominant polyp and cancer syndrome, and it's driven by germline mutation in the tumor suppressor gene, STIC11. Um, hammered tomatous polyps will be seen in greater than 95% of patients, often in the small bowel, along with the melanin pigmentation. Uh, also, you have increased risk of breast, colon, stomach, pancreas, and ovary cancers, and, and particularly ovary, you have scatats. CDH1 associated breast cancer. Remember, uh, CDH1 gene is the gene for ECADherin, and this um, condition is due to an inactivating germline mutation in CDH1. And it leads to that characteristic lobular carcinoma of the breast, which is discohesive. Um, this is because ECADherin is 
its normal function is for cell adhesion and tumor suppression. And if you have a CDH1 inactivating germline mutation, oftentimes it's associated with hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. And what, what that shows, and if you do have it, are kind of the signet ring-like cells. And in terms of the kind of progression, it'll stay above the basement membrane, pagetoid spread, and then can then progress to invasive diffuse gastric cancer. Let's talk about ataxia telangiectasia. Uh, this is due to a mutation in the ATM gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene that phosphorylates P53 and BRCA1 in response to DNA double-strand breaks. Um, there's a high risk of malignancy, and you have ex exquisite sensitivity to ionizing radiation. Some symptoms include, uh, or some conditions that you might have if you have ATM, are progressive cerebellar ataxia, oculocutaneous telangiectasias, which you can see here, and variable immunodeficiency, sterility, and sinopulmonary infections. Uh, homozygotes have the full disorder, and heterozygotes have a risk of breast cancer at a young age. Lastly, let's talk about Calvin syndrome. This is due to a P10 mutation, and it's 10 is in the name, so it's all in chromosome 10. It's an autosomal dominant. It's a tumor suppressor, and it leads to a lots of different tumors, um, including breast cancer. And let's look at this cow. Uh, breast cancer, you can have, the, there's a bell around the neck, so it's thyroid cancer. You can have endometrial cancer. Uh, it, the cow has a bow, a pink bow, so it reminds you of uterine cancer. Um, and then you can have trichelomumas, because this is a cow, as well as lipomas. Um, and in the esophagus, you can get glycogen acanthosis, stomachs, polyps often resemble hyperplastic polyps. And in the colon, you can have stroma-rich polyps with cystically dilated glands that can mimic juvenile polyps. And it can contain adipocytes in the lamina propria and can get ganglioneuromatous, uh, sorry, <laughs> ganglioneuromatous polyps. <laughs> there we go. Um, sorry about that. So uh, just to recap, familial syndromes increases in your risk of breast cancer, BRCA1 and 2. Your highest risks are breast and ovarian cancer. You want to do prophylactic bilateral mastectomy and salpingo-oophorectomy. And if you do have cancers driven by this, you want PARP inhibitors. BRCA1 has a um, greater risk of ovarian and fallopian tube, high-grade serous carcinomas. Um, BRCA2 has a higher risk for, for male breast cancers. Uh, Lee Fraumini is due to a TP53 associated. You can also have a CHECK2 associated. P. Jaegers, autosomal dominant due to STIK11. Think about hamartomatous polyps as well as mucocutaneous melanin pigmentation, especially around the lips. You can also have increased risk of breast cancers as well as ovary, pancreas, stomach, colon. Uh, CDH1 is due to inactivating mutation in ECADherin, uh, and it's oftentimes associated with hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. Um, ataxia telangiectasia is due to a mutation in ATM gene, and you can have progressive cerebellar ataxia, oculocutaneous telangiectasias, immunodeficiency. Um, heterozygotes have a higher risk of breast cancer at a young age. And then Calvin's, think of a cow with a pink bow tie for uterine cancer, the breast for the udders, breast cancer, the bell for the thyroid cancers, and for the skin, you can have trichelomumas. And here are some trichelomumas on the skin. All right, thank you for watching Pathagonia. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, bye.